Morning everyone, welcome to Road Road at Bristol. I'm John and in this video we are going to be stripping down and refurbishing a cylinder head off of a CBR 1000F 1988. So without further ado, let's get on with it. <laughs> Okay then, this is something I don't do every day. I have done it before, but uh, many years ago on a Z400 and it still smoked when I did it. <laughs> so, these are the carburetors. So this is, as you would be sitting on the bike, so that is cylinder one, two, three, four. So I have my appropriate boxers, one, two, three, four. And just in case when I fill them up, the number one disappears, put it on the sides as well. So, let's start off by removing these uh, holding on plates, or whatever they are. Okay, so these are just like 10 mil bolts, 16 10 mil bolts. And I have got this, like I said in a previous video, got this for Christmas. I actually charged this up on Christmas Day and it's still working because I want to uh, run the battery out fully before I recharge it because it's all brand new. Okay, so let's crack all these open. life a lot easier if you've got one of these but they are expensive so that's that one and there is some little we get you in close there is some little guide plates to keep these little rocker things in line so don't forget to remove those how you remove all those. Okay then, so. Okay then, so that snap, crackle and pop was my microphone backing up. So all the way through the rest of this video, there is no audio. So when I put it back onto my laptop to check it, to my surprise, it had gone. So here we are, low rating over the top. Don't we just love making videos? All right then, so these little rocker things, these little silver spade shaped things, I think I'm gonna leave them on on this head. I did take them off on the other cylinder head, but on this one I'm gonna leave them on because I don't think I really need them to get access to the springs. And uh, that is what we're doing next. We're moving the springs. So let me get my Mad Max spring compressor. Yes, here's one I made earlier. Okay, so let's turn the uh, cylinder head over. So I've already removed one valve to test my tool out and it still works okay. So we just need to put one end onto the valve like so and we need to turn the cylinder head over again then we need to put this part on the top of the valve so it can compress the spring and I can remove the collets so put my uh, gizmo back on 
It is a bit big and clumbersome, so you can't really see anything. So let me try and move the camera around again. Okay then, so we've altered all our gizmo. I've actually cut the bracket smaller, welded the uh, tunnel bit onto it. So hopefully now you'll be able to see the removal of the spring. Okay then, so here is the spring. We're going to be removing, hopefully you can see it. All the other springs are already out. Just got this last one to show you. Okay, so we just feel underneath for our valve. There it is. Extend this a bit. Just uh, put your old thumb and finger and then just go by feel. Go to the valve underneath. Yes, we're definitely on it. Let's start compressing. Still don't think you can see very well. Can you see that? I don't think you could actually see that. Try and get you in a better position again. There's the spring. I can't bloody see anything, can you? That now. Now then, hopefully you can see that a bit better. So now we just obviously compress the spring. And hopefully we can fish the collets out with our magnet with our clean magnet. And there we go, there's one of them. See if we can get the other one. And there's the other one. So we now just don't compress the spring. take the top hat off of the top then there is one big outer spring and then there is one inner inner spring and there is the valve itself if you can just see that stick it up there Let's just push that through put it out underneath and there it is. And then we just have to pull off the valve stem seal. Like so. But then there is another secret washer hiding right down at the bottom. Like so, where are I? So make sure you remove those, otherwise you'll be dropping them on the floor and losing them when you are moving your cylinder head about. That's the big washer off and there is actually a smaller washer as well, right down the bottom. Like that. Where are we? Like that. So there's a big washer, a little washer, uh, the oil seal, then there's the fin spring, then there's the fat spring, then there's the top hat, and then there's the two little collets. And of course, then there is the valve sticking through the bottom.
So that's that. Everything out that I want out. But now I've gotten all the valves out. Turn the head over again, but it does look pretty nasty. I don't know if you can see in there. Lots of horrible crappy wappy stuff. Yes, as you can probably see in there, they're not uh, too brilliant. These, this one was the one with the water in. It looks like this one's had water in it as well. And these two, like they've been burning oil. So I think I'm going to have to go in the other shed and get my other cylinder head out and give that a check over. Because I think this one has had a pretty hard life. Plus I have noticed another thing. Hopefully you can see these fixings for the cam chain cover protector which goes all the way across and we've got one there one fixing there one fixing there go to the other end we've got one fixing there and this one is broken off so whether that's important or not I don't know so what I'm hoping to do is Find the other cylinder head in the other shed and hopefully it's a lot better than this one. So we'll be back in a bit. And this is the other one. Not much difference really I suppose. I suppose the other one is slightly better. Plus it hasn't gotten the broken cam chain guide rocker cover protector. Yep, yeah, but uh, all these rubbers are absolutely solid like stone not rubber so what I'm thinking of doing is because I think these are quite expensive as well just going down the same route as I went with the divvy just make my own rubbers with some silicon pipe and hopefully that will work so what next? Well, I suppose I've got a... That looks bent as well. So that's going to be all fun and games, isn't it? So I've got to try and get that out. Uh, I've got to give it a damn good clean up. And then... I suppose we could start to rebuild it. Okay then, so going back to the pots on the last video, really close inspection, they are all knackered really. I did say I'd sourced one on eBay, which was a 1988 CBR 1000F, but for some reason, let me get it into the right position, but for some good position, good position. But for some reason, it's got the, uh, it looks exactly the same as this, but there's a little spout. 
sticking out there or there somewhere. There's a little start sticking out. Which you have to pull a rubber pipe on obviously or something. And I found every single 1988 CBR I found, I've got that spout sticking out of the cylinder barrels. And mine haven't. I have yet to uh, dig mine out of the other shed to check, but I'm pretty sure that hasn't got a spout on it either. So I'm not sure what's going off really. I uh, think what it could be is like the, uh, I don't know, the engines changed, didn't they, in about uh, 80 died, 90. I think the engines changed to a longer stroke or something. I don't know. Uh, I don't understand it all. So I'm not sure whether my engines or the newer engines. Do the newer engines fit in the older frames? I don't know. I ain't got a clue. So I'll have to do some research on the uh, engines. I think one's a C24, one's a C21, something like that. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, so I'll have to do some research and see which engine I've got. I think the best thing to do is take the engine numbers in it and then see what's what. I don't know, just search on Google or something, I don't know. But I'm sure I'll find out. So I've still got a lot to do, I've still got to refurbish the... Still got to clean the cylinder head, and I've still got to recondition it, put everything back in, grind the valves and do all that lot. But I haven't got the grinding tools, and I haven't got much time this week to do it. So I'm going to call that the end of this video because it's bloody cold and I've had enough. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it's of some use to some people who are actually tinkering with their CVR1000F engine. And stay well, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one. And if I don't see you on the next one... I'll see you in another life, brother. There'll be trouble.